Hello, and welcome to our interview series, We Choose to Thrive, brought to you by Becky Norwood of The Woman I Love. We bring you stories of survivors who have chosen to heal, to thrive. If you are an abuse survivor and are starting or continuing your healing journey, these stories will provide hope, inspiration, and a knowingness that you are not alone. Join us in today's interview. Deborah, give us a little bit of the background of what you went through and your healing process. What I went through is by the time I was 16 years old, I refer to it as growing up a victim of illusions under a purple sky because I was under the impression and the belief that I was unlovable I was unwanted and I didn't matter. I had been sexually abused by four different men by the time I was 16, two of which I was related to and living in the same home as. So would you say that those experiences caused you to live with very self-defeating tendencies? Absolutely. I'm an author and I've written two books. The first one was Her Story, Victim to Victorious. And it depicts my life of how I became victorious over abuse and addictions, how I stayed away from an illicit lifestyle. Although I lived neck deep in it, I I, I wasn't fully in the illicit lifestyle. What are the most positive things that you've done to overcome the trauma, overcome the pain of what you went through? The first thing I did was I went back to school at the age of 39. They say life begins at 40, but I started a bit early. (laughs) I went in with a grade nine education thinking that I didn't know what I was doing, but I knew I had to do something different than what I thought I should be doing. So I went back to school. Mental health rehabilitation was the program I took. Through that, I was able to self-diagnose and find out that through mentoring other students that I did matter. I was lovable, I was smart, and it was time for me to thrive in life and stop surviving. Mm, that is so beautiful and a recurring thing. You know? Yes. It, it's something that is so important at this point to shed light for those that are just beginning down this path. So what would you say to somebody that is just now starting this path that's in that pain that you and I both know so well? They're realizing that they need to do something different. They're tired of feeling that that heavy ache in their heart and that feeling of unworthiness. What would you say? I would say reach out. You're not alone. There are far more people who have been abused, I would say, than have not. I would say the statistics are not accurate by any stretch. Just based on people that I've spoken to, there's a lot of people that are coming out like you and I as uh, survivors and thrivers after abuse. You've come to this place where so much healing has taken place. Yes. And what would you say is, aside from going to school, is the single most valuable thing you've done for yourself? The single most valuable thing I've done for myself is putting my story onto paper and sharing it with the world. It was an unleashing of things that needed to be revealed. And it was time for the truth to come out because I'd been living a lie my whole life. My whole life I ran and I lived a lie and it was time to stop running and stop living a lie and own what had happened to me and not be owned by it. That is a key word, isn't it? Not yes. By it. Because yes, it, I was owned by it. It does own us for a very long time. And yes. It, color, it colors everything about our world. Purple sky. <laughs> oh, so beautiful. We know that you would say writing. So writing for you has done what kind of miracle? What, what would you say has been the key element of change for you because of your writing? Writing to me, I'm able to express myself and feel like I'm not being judged. I'm not going to judge my own writing. And 
the only judging that I have received from anyone in regards to my writing of my story has been so positive and amazing and nurturing. Mm -hmm. Nurturing is, for so many years I felt alone and now I am, I know I'm not alone. I'm, I'm one of millions and as scary and as sad as that is, it makes me happy to know that we're all starting to speak out about this horrible epidemic. And that's what it is. It's an epidemic. It's a disease and it needs to stop. That is and us, us talking about it is it's time. And there could be no better description of it as an epidemic. Yes, absolutely. Most of us will think of it as the flu, like the flu. <laughs> yes. This is, this is the same. In essence, it's the same. It's the same thing. But I think it, deep, it bites way deeper than the, any kind of physical uh, illness. It, it, it goes so deep because one of the ten, many of the tendencies for people that have gone through this are very self-destructive, whether it's uh, addiction to sex, drugs, alcohol, abusing themselves. <laughs> you know, um, you, such feelings of unworthiness. Yes. And then as we come out of it, we see we don't have to live that way. And number, first and foremost, we're not alone. Yeah. Absolutely not alone. Yeah. So what resources did you use, Deborah, that you would recommend to others starting out on their journey of healing? Resources, connect with nature and connect with things that you're passionate about and people who are passionate about you. Mm. Connect, connect with those people. Very good. I think those are the, the, the key factors is you have to find, and it's not gonna be the same for every one of us. For some of us, writing, just, is nothing about what we how we can relate maybe right. maybe it's art maybe it's dance maybe That's right maybe it's just being out in the forest alone maybe it's being at the ocean it doesn't it's matter. all of them <laughs> find it find it and if it's all of it then good one of the things about writing that i have found is we can write in the night when we can't sleep we can yes. write at the times when we, that trusted friend that we depended on can't be there to listen to us, when our counselor is not available, there are many things that can be done with writing and nobody else is there to look at it. You're not, it's not a contest to see how many misspelled words you have or how you've written, but in the writing, we change our story. Absolutely. Yeah. You're releasing it into the universe and letting the universe deal with it. It's no longer your weight to bear you've got millions of other weight bearers with you, if that makes sense, you know? Yeah, you're not, you're not carrying it alone anymore. There's so many women out there who are struggling with the same, with the same addictions that, that I'm sure both of us struggled with mm -hmm. and now thrive over. So that's, that's the importance is taking that first step in writing is, very, very important in that, for sure. So tell us again the name of your book, both of your books, actually. First book is Her Story, Victim to Victorious. The second book I just released last week, and it is Purple Sky Survivalist, Growing Up a Victim of Illusions. And it's part of a, a series of books, the Survivalist to Thrivalist series. So I'm really happy to be releasing these. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm delighted to be able to support you in that. And Thank you. As far as this topic, I've had today, because my book is just released, I've even had men reach out and say they were victims of the same type of thing. Yes, absolutely. And so it's been, like you say, a widespread epidemic. Yes. And one that needs to be stopped. <laughs> it can be stopped. There is a cure. There, there is, is a cure, and it's awareness. Yes. It's awareness and speaking out, and that's what the cure is to this, is, is speaking yes. out and yeah. sharing your story. Yes. And thank you for having the courage to share your story, and I appreciate that you've taken the time today. I will be in touch, and 
Um, I hope your day, the rest of your day is absolutely awesome. <laughs> Thank you, I hope yours is as well. And congratulations again on your book. This story was brought to you by The Woman I Love at www.thewomanilove.com. If you are starting down the path to healing, no matter what stage, our united message is that you are not alone. We do not want to live with a victim mentality. We choose to thrive, and as such, we are joining hands to spread the message that you too can heal and thrive. Will you join us as a force of change we need in our world? Only by healing, growing strong, and uniting can we create the awareness of this terrible epidemic that is plaguing our world. We heal in many different ways. There is no one right way to heal. But the right thing to do is to heal. Heal for yourself, for your families, and for our world. Will you join us in this We Choose to Thrive revolution? Reach out to us at www.thewomanilove.com Also check out the incredible resources at www.rainn.org. And if you are actively facing abuse in this moment, do not delay. Seek out help in your local community immediately. Here is to your wellness, healing, and thriving.